Oh hey there, don't mind me, just playing some good old classic Super Mario Odyssey. What? I never said for the Switch. Super Mario World Odyssey. Boy, what a name that is. This ROM hack is pretty solid, man. It takes the idea of tossing Cappy onto enemies and controlling them and throws that into Super Mario World. The floating Cap even acts as an extra platform to jump off of. Very nice touch. Nothing else has really been changed with this hack. It is the core Super Mario World experience just with this new ability. But if you played through the classic SM dub a million times like I have, it is really neat to play this once again, but with a modern touch. Most of the time. So it's that time once again. The Mario franchise has created a fan base with the time and the resources to take the original games and modify them to give us something either slightly different or something entirely new. And it's awesome. ROM hacking is the name of the game once again here. Last time I did a general episode on the Red Luigi franchise, I covered the original trilogy and world. And this time, we're going to do more of the same and more. There is still Mario 64 that we could talk about a whole lot more, but I still think that deserves its own spotlight. There's a lot to that game. Back in the first episode, there was a Super Mario Bros. 2 hack called The Legend of the Blob Bros. 2. It was a really fun one too, but while discussing it, I mentioned that I didn't really find any other hacks that I wanted to cover from this game, leading to many people saying they found others, and fine. You asked for it. This one is really simple, it simply converts the sprites into Pokemon ones. That's it. Pretty neat. Let's get more interesting though, here's Wicked Clown Bros. In this one you play as members of the insane clown posse fighting against a bunch of birds. Now you gotta excuse me here, I'm not all that well versed in the deep lore of the ICP, so I am very unsure where a stick figure comes into play, and that goes double for the ninja. So yeah, you could see that there was a reason I stuck to the blobs last time. Honestly, what's most interesting here is said ninja takes Peach's spot on the character select screen, but the hacker went and modified how they played, removing the floatability entirely. That's a bit of hacking I didn't expect. Pretty impressive actually. That is, dare I say it, insane? No, not really. In the grand scheme of things, that's pretty standard. Alright, so until further notice, I am done with Super Mario Bros. 2. Don't get me wrong, I love that game to death, but the fan hacking community, it just, it isn't there like the other games are. And speaking of which, I want to go into more uncharted territories here. Now's the perfect time to do that. Maybe some hacks on some more vintage games like Donkey Kong and Mario Bros. Interestingly, these next two kinda coincide with each other. First up, you got Super Bovine Battle The Search for Milk. Moo? Moo indeed. DRINK CHOCOLATE MILK! Alright, listen, don't tell me what to do. So, I, I guess I'm a cow searching for milk. I'm not gonna question the logic there. The original game had plumbers cleaning out pipes in the sewer of turtles. So anything goes, really. Just watch out for the backwards flying birds. Oh boy, those things will get you. And in case things get a little too hairy, just use a stick of dynamite to swing things back to your advantage. And hey, you know what you can do with milk, right? Correct! Ice cream! Apparently now it's up to us to stop the evil ice cream factory and save our girlfriend from a giant ice cream cone. I mean, to be fair, I would do the same thing if I was in that scenario. Honestly, as bizarre as this is, points for originality. I love that the fire barrel is now an endlessly scooping bin of ice cream. That's pretty nice. You just go through the three stages, save your girl, and kill that ice cream cone for good. No ice cream! Oh, I guess this was one of those anti-ice cream propaganda things this whole time. Now I'm not a fan. Actually, going back to Mario Bros, I found a pretty interesting one here called New Mario Bros. This is essentially if this game was made during the NES era, rather than being just a port of an earlier arcade game. 
Everything looks more modern, and on top of that, Mario has better control. Rather than sticking to your momentum in mid-air, you can change mid-jump, which if you've been playing this game for a while, is pretty bizarre. I managed to find a few other hacks out there that just modified the graphics. May not seem like all that big of a deal, but hey, I thought they were pretty cool. Super Mario Bros. DX. Bam, look at this. This looks pretty sweet. The original game is certainly a classic, you can never take that away from it, but this almost feels like an NES version of the All-Stars version. And it's really cool seeing a game this vintage with this new coat of paint on the same console. And now we can finally move on to the Game Boy. That's right, Super Mario Land can be hacked as well. It's another basic graphics hack, but I mean, come on now. It's wild seeing this game with more than four colors. And let me just say, I love Super Mario Land. It has definitely aged, but it still epitomizes simple Game Boy fun. The sequel, on the other hand, whoo boy. This game 100% outshines the predecessor, and now it is also available in full color. Oh man. Super Mario Land 2 was a staple of my childhood, and now it looks better than ever. The original game boasted varied landscapes across multiple worlds, and now they all have a separate coat of paint to match them, and it is great! You can even play as Luigi here, that's really cool! You gotta remember, this game initially came out in an era where people didn't really care all that much about Luigi like they do now, so it's nice to see Green Mario get a spotlight here. I even found a full level design hack of Super Mario Land with Super Mario Land X. Honestly though, it is a bit rough. It shows very repetitive level layouts and a ton of coins. I guess that's a staple of at least one official Mario game. I think it's more so just neat that Land can finally be hacked now, and between that and the color hack, we probably have a pretty exciting future with this one. And if you want to go even more old school... Boy, technology's amazing. Alright, I know this isn't necessarily a ROM hack, but I just have to mention this one. This is Princess Rescue for the Atari 2600. Someone out there managed to make a proper Mario game on the 2600. That console barely had the capability to have games on it that lasted more than one screen and a bunch of noise. Meanwhile, here we have proper level scrolling and even music. This is probably going to be enjoyable only to those who appreciate how impressive this is for the hardware. So with that in consideration, I give this credit for just existing. Now a lot of you were also requesting I take a look at Mario Adventure. Apparently this one is pretty popular. And after playing it, I can see why. This hack has a sort of open world aspect to it. You choose a world from the start, and your progress is saved when you reset the game. The goal is to get each world's hidden key, and you can do it in any order that you want. It's pretty cool. Levels also have alternating weather that randomly changes upon each start. Also neat. There's a couple of new power-ups too. The Fire Flower has been modified, changing how the fireball works and also giving you a high jump. There's an invisible Mario a la Super Mario 64, and a couple more. But honestly guys, that's as far as I'll go here. Mario Adventure is certainly neat. The difficulty is pretty high in this one, but maybe I'm, I'm just not that good at it. And it is definitely one of the more ambitious hacks out there, considering it is over 10 years old, and I would say that it's worth checking out for that alone. But for my money, 3Mix is still the king. I actually enjoyed this one more, this is Super Mario Bros 3 Ultimate. It's less ambitious for sure, but its graphical changes are really nice, and the level design was solid. This one was just pleasant all around to play, and honestly the adorable Mario sprite is what kept me going the entire time. It's so cute! So ultimately yeah, between these three hacks here, Mario 3 has some top tier fan made content. And now we move back on to Super Mario World, still the gold haven of Mario hacking goodness. And if I wanted to go through every single Mario World hack there that was worth a damn, I'd be here for hours. I don't have that in me. I'm only one guy. That'll, that would kill me. Brutal Mario. I'm sure a lot of you guys are excited I'm talking about this one. This one is a bit famous, apparently. It is essentially a showcase of a bunch of hacking techniques that are becoming more common over time. 
Sure, we got a bunch of modified graphics, but here we have a day to night cycle mid-level. You have these wavy, watery effects. Here's a giant fish that you got to avoid every few seconds. There's a border. Well, I guess you just keep tossing stuff at a wall and see what sticks, I guess. The plot is intriguing too. Mario wants to eat some dragons, I guess confuses Yoshi for a dragon instead of a dinosaur, and uh... Okay, yeah, so he, he goes to eat some some Yoshi. That that is that is brutal, all right. Unfortunately, this hack isn't and never fully will be completed, but it's still worth playing since it surely had an effect on future hacks. Like maybe this one here had a bit of its influence. Here we have Il Il Man Manero. Hold on. Il Maniero Spettrale. Yeah, that. As Ouija, it is up to you to explore a giant mansion and free 18 lost souls. This one is really cool because it's actually open world, you can go about this any way you want. The first room that you walk into branches off onto multiple paths, and there are a wide plethora of challenges that reward you with said lost souls. Having it be all dark and spooky with a playable Luigi just makes it all the sweeter. The year of Luigi will never die. And you see, this is why I love ROM hacking. This is a perfect example of taking something familiar and making it feel new. The same kinda goes for this one here, Jumpman's Return. Essentially, it's like a retelling of the classic Donkey Kong arcade game, with some music from Donkey Kong Country as well. No hammer ability in this one though, unfortunately. That would have been perfect. It's sort of a basic and difficult level hack, but I don't know, I would say this is an example of style making this one stand out over the- Oh, is Kirby. Oh, that- that makes a lot of sense now, actually. Now I know why I like this one so much. That- that makes things simple. And that covers all the hacks I have this time around. Not as wacky and weird as last time, probably, but I think I already covered all my bases last time. I wanted to go for more interesting hacks this time around. But I still... I still gotta end on something... something neat. Um... I got it! So you know how there's a bunch of Sonic the Hedgehog hacks out there that are just the original games, but with different playable characters from the Sonic universe? Those are really cool, and it turns out that that does exist for Mario. Super Mario Crossover. I can't even begin to explain how cool this is. Brought to us by the team at Exploding Rabbit Games. That's grotesque right there. Alright, so Super Mario Bros. 1, right? What if you could play that game with 10 differently skilled characters with a ton of alternate costumes between all of them and a bunch of different graphical and musical sets. And hell, why not throw in the Lost Levels and that weird Super Mario Bros. special computer game from Japan? Does anybody even know about this thing? Of course you don't. And the best part about this? For what it's striving to do, it is perfect. Every character that was put in this game plays exactly as they did in their Source games, just with some extra tweaks to the controls to make them fit the Mario series a little bit more, like finally allowing Metroid to kneel. No crawling though, Metroid still can't crawl. There's something really satisfying about crashing through a Mario castle playing as a Tetris block, which is a skin for the Blaster Master tank, before getting destroyed by Ganon. God, video games are awesome sometimes. Alright, Simon Belmont, I know you can slay Dracula on any given day. Surely this blooper will pose no- Okay, maybe Ryu Hayabusa, world-renowned ninja, can get the job done. Alright, Mega Man's sister, Roll. She never really gets a spotlight on her, but I bet, when given the opportunity, she can conquer all in her path. Mario it is. Unlike those Sonic hacks that I mentioned, I don't think this stuff will ever be possible with NES hacking, making this pretty special. I mean, the possibilities here are endless. You could tackle the underground levels as Alex from River City Ransom, maybe a castle with Bill from Contra. You could avoid some flying fish with Luigi. That's always neat. I got it. I got it. You could save the princess as Mario. I feel like that one's been done before.